Neutron stars, some of the most astonishing entities in the cosmos, are super dense, scorching droplets of matter existing in an incredibly exotic state. They possess gravity rivaled only by black holes, boast magnetic fields of unparalleled strength in the universe, and exhibit a host of other exotic and remarkable properties. Neutron stars mark the boundary between objects whose physics we broadly understand and those that remain beyond our comprehension, such as black holes. In fact, neutron stars reside right on this boundary, with many of their characteristics still shrouded in mystery, awaiting our unraveling. Yet, even today, we've accumulated a considerable wealth of knowledge about neutron stars, how they form, thrive, and meet their end. And that's precisely what we'll delve into in today's video. So, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to stay updated, and let's dive in. Neutron stars are among the cosmic phenomena initially predicted on paper and later confirmed through observations. The notion of such entities was first proposed by Soviet scientist Lev Landau in 1932, followed by a more refined hypothesis put forth by German researcher Walter Bodd and Swiss scientist Fritz Zwicky. However, it wasn't until much later that neutron stars were discovered, a discovery that initially left astronomers puzzled about what they had stumbled upon. To be more precise, in 1967, American astronomer Jocelyn Bell detected an enigmatic radio signal emanating from a mysterious object in the constellation Vulpecula. What made this signal peculiar was its repetitive nature, occurring with strict periodicity every 0.04 seconds. Initially, astronomers entertained the idea that they had stumbled upon a message from an extraterrestrial civilization. Yet, it soon became clear that they were dealing with precisely what Landau, Bod, and Svicky had predicted, a neutron star. Bell's discovery, named PSR B1919 plus 21, marked the first documented pulsar, a specific subtype of neutron stars and a distinct stage in their evolution. We'll delve into the nature of pulsars and the mechanism behind their pulsations a bit later in this very video. So, what exactly is a neutron star, and how do these remarkable entities come into being? Essentially, they are born in the cores of massive stars. The substance within all stars is plasma, where atomic nuclei and free electrons exist and move independently of one another. In the cores of stars, this plasma is compressed to an extreme degree by the pressure from the outer layers, leading to an exotic state known as degenerate matter. In this state, matter is compressed to its maximum possible extent. Any further compression is impossible, no matter how much pressure is applied. More precisely, it's the electron component of the plasma in stars that reaches this compression limit. As we discussed in one of our previous videos, there exists a minimum distance between electrons and matter, beyond which they cannot be brought any closer. The value of this distance is inversely proportional to the square root of the particle's kinetic energy, or in simpler terms, their temperature and mass. Therefore, the hotter the electron gas, the more it can be compressed before reaching degeneracy. The larger the star, the higher the temperature of its substance. In the most massive stars, the material can be compressed so intensely that a process conducive to the formation of neutron stars takes place. In this process, electrons in the plasma start colliding with atomic nuclei, capturing their protons and transforming them into neutrons while emitting neutrinos. This process is called electron capture, and it occurs not only under extreme conditions within the cores of massive stars. Even under normal conditions, electron capture frequently happens in certain isotopes, such as aluminum-26, potassium-40, or nickel-59, where converting a proton into a neutron is energetically favorable, leading to a decrease in the atom's mass. However, within the high temperature, high pressure cores of massive stars, this process becomes far more active, involving all atoms present. Protons within star plasma begin to transform en masse into neutrons, causing the atoms to lose stability and decay. This process is also known as neutronization. Neutronization causes the concentration of free electrons in the plasma to plummet. The electron degeneracy lifts, allowing the star's core material to undergo compression once again. And this compression is no ordinary feat. In a mere fraction of a second, the core's radius shrinks from thousands to mere tens of kilometers, a reduction of hundreds of times. The volume, consequently, shrinks by millions of times. But the story doesn't end there. The core's material continues its journey, transforming into a state of degenerate matter, not electron degeneracy this time, but neutron degeneracy. This happens at even higher densities. What emerges is what we call a neutron star, a tiny, blazing hot, and incredibly dense droplet of matter, mostly composed of, you guessed it, neutrons. As the core contracts, the surrounding layers of the star rush in to fill the void. This inward fall accelerates these layers to incredible speeds, causing them to collide with the neutronized core and bounce back. 
This collision creates a powerful shockwave that races outward, ultimately tearing the star apart in a cosmic spectacle known as a supernova explosion. This explosion scatters the star's material into space, giving birth to what we call a planetary nebula. At the heart of this nebula, the intact stellar core remains, now transformed into a neutron star. But hold on, sometimes the tale takes a different twist. In the most massive stars, the temperature soars to heights where even neutron degeneracy can't counterbalance the gravitational collapse. The core collapses further under its immense weight, leading to the birth of a black hole. In other words, neutron stars form within a specific range of star masses. Stars too light won't ignite the neutronization process, while the most massive ones evolve into black holes. Speaking of neutron stars, they possess a mind-boggling density. Imagine packing the mass of our sun into a sphere just 10 to 20 kilometers in radius. These neutron stars have a size of a big city. Their material is so dense that a mere teaspoon of it would weigh a billion tons, equivalent to the weight of a massive mountain like Everest. And the gravitational pull? Oh, it's staggering. The surface gravity on a neutron star is mind-bending. If you were to fall from just one meter above its surface, you'd accelerate to a mind-blowing 2 million meters per second by the time you hit the ground. Neutron stars also showcase a mesmerizing ballet of rotation. While our sun takes around 24 and a half days to complete a single rotation, Neutron stars perform this celestial pirouette in mere hundredths or even thousandths of a second. The secret to their swift rotation lies in the principle of angular momentum conservation. Angular momentum is intricately linked to the square of a rotating object's characteristic size, which, in the case of a sphere like a neutron star, is its radius squared. When coupled with the mass and angular velocity of rotation, this concept unveils a fascinating truth. As the characteristic size shrinks, the rotational speed must dramatically increase to maintain the original angular momentum. And in the case of neutron stars, as we previously mentioned, their core radius dwindles by hundreds of times during the collapse, causing their angular velocity to soar by tens of thousands of times. Just as the rotation of regular stars generates magnetic fields, the hyper-rapid rotation of neutron stars propels them into the realm of extraordinary magnetic fields. Earth's magnetic field, for instance, is around half a gauss, while the Sun's magnetic field measures around 50 Gauss. The most potent artificial magnet ever created by humans reached a staggering 450,000 Gauss. In contrast, the magnetic fields of neutron stars can reach an astonishing 10 to the power of 14 Gauss, that's a mind-boggling 100 trillion Gauss. Now, you might wonder how a neutron star's rotation generates a magnetic field when its main building blocks, neutrons, lack electric charge. A valid question indeed. However, the term neutron star isn't entirely literal. These stellar marvels are composed of more than just neutrons. Neutron stars possess a rather intricate structure. Their surface, often referred to as the crust, predominantly consists of ordinary atomic nuclei suspended in a sea of free electrons. To be more precise, a significant portion of these atomic nuclei are iron and nickel nuclei, remnants of the star's core before neutronization took hold. Picture this. A neutron star is encased within a relatively thin metallic shell, about a kilometer thick. However, this metallic substance is far from ordinary, it boasts astronomical densities and strengths that far surpass those of steel. Deeper within the neutron star, the existence of atoms becomes impossible due to neutronization. Free neutrons, though inherently unstable, undergo decay, a process known as beta decay, transforming into protons, electrons, and neutrinos. Remarkably, the newborn protons swiftly experience electron capture, reverting back into neutrons. These processes occur in tandem within a neutron star. Neutrons become protons, protons become neutrons, and so forth. However, the pressure and temperature within a neutron star's core ultimately favor neutronization. Consequently, only about 10% of a neutron star's matter consists of protons. Worth noting is that both beta decay and electron capture give birth to neutrinos, which escape the neutron star, carrying away a significant portion of its internal energy into the cosmos. While the internet is awash with theories detailing the inner workings of neutron stars, let's be candid, these explanations remain, for the most part, speculative hypotheses. Unfortunately, we haven't yet unraveled the intricacies of the physics underlying the strong nuclear interaction, a prerequisite for comprehensively modeling the behavior of neutron matter. A prevailing consensus among scientists suggests that the inner regions of a neutron star resemble a neutron liquid, a peculiar fluid exhibiting superfluidity and superconductivity. Diving deep into the heart of a neutron star, we step into a realm where certainty wanes and hypotheses prevail. In simpler terms, we venture beyond the realm of confident assertions. Put plainly, we lack a definitive understanding of the substance that resides within a neutron star's core. 
Some scientists propose that the inner core consists of the same neutrons, compressed to an even denser state than the outer regions. On the other hand, some theorize that the core's temperatures and pressures are so extreme that neutrons break down, releasing quarks and gluons held within them and giving rise to what's known as quark-gluon plasma. We've witnessed a glimpse of this exotic state of matter in particle accelerators. When high-speed collisions occur between, say, two protons, quark-gluon plasma emerges. However, in such instances, this fleeting state lasts mere fractions of a second before quarks recombine into composite particles, a process termed hadronization. Within the depths of neutron stars, quark-gluon plasma could persist for billions of years, or so proponents of the quark-gluon plasma theory posit. Whether this theory holds true, and whether quark-gluon plasma truly resides within stellar cores, remains a mystery. Measurements of neutron star masses and radii might unveil the truth. Neutron stars containing quark-gluon plasma should be denser than purely neutron stars. Alas, current measurements yield results that fail to decisively confirm either hypothesis or refute the other. Exiting the core, let's return to the neutron star surface, a theater of intriguing occurrences. As previously mentioned, neutron stars wield mighty gravitational forces, enabling them to siphon matter from their surroundings. This material could emerge as plasma clouds resulting from the explosion of the parent star, or as matter drawn from a companion star in a binary system, both instances involving charged particle streams. These particles face not only the gravitational pull of the neutron star but also its magnetic field. This magnetic force captures inbound particles, channeling them along its magnetic lines toward the star's magnetic poles. A similar interplay between charged particles and magnetic fields occurs with, for instance, solar particles in Earth's magnetic field. However, neutron stars boast immensely stronger magnetic fields, yielding results far more remarkable. In the most youthful, hot, and rapidly spinning neutron stars, magnetic fields are so potent that matter cannot reach the star's surface. Near the star's magnetic poles, the fall transforms into an outward process. Material surges into space as twin mighty fountains, known as relativistic jets. Here, you'd expect an explanation for the mechanism responsible for this paradoxical switch from falling to ejection. Alas, such an explanation eludes us due to the lack of a complete theory among astrophysicists. While it's clear that gravitational and magnetic fields of the neutron star jointly influence the particles, the precise mechanism remains veiled. It appears that, near the magnetic poles, where particle speeds peak, magnetic field lines rupture and rejoin in a different configuration, a phenomenon termed magnetic reconnection. A comparable process triggers solar flares. This, admittedly, provides a somewhat incomplete explanation of the phenomenon, but it stands as the current state of scientific understanding. Beyond charged particle streams, rapidly rotating neutron stars emit powerful electromagnetic radiation from their poles, predominantly in the radio range. These emissions give rise to periodic signals, initially mistaken for extraterrestrial messages, which led to the discovery of neutron stars. Here's the twist, a neutron star's magnetic poles typically don't align with its geometric poles. This, by the way, is a common phenomenon, Earth's magnetic poles don't align with its geographic ones either. Consequently, during a pulsar's rotation, the jets and accompanying electromagnetic streams trace out distinct cones in space. When a beam from such a cone intersects Earth, we observe a flash that swiftly dims as the beam moves away. This sequence appears as a repeating radio signal, cycling hundreds or even thousands of times per second, mirroring the rotation frequency of the neutron star generating it. The exact mechanism behind the formation of these radio beams remains a mystery. Most likely, they are linked to the accelerated motion of charged particles within the pulsar's magnetic field. Nevertheless, when it comes to the finer details of this process, there exist numerous hypotheses, so we are still far from a complete understanding. What is clear, however, is that pulsars, or more specifically, radio pulsars, are neutron stars, the earliest stage of neutron star evolution, that rotate at incredibly high speeds. As time progresses, the temperature of neutron stars decreases, causing a drop in their rotation rate. Consequently, the magnetic field weakens and eventually becomes incapable of preventing matter from falling onto the star's surface. While the star loses its jet, it remains a pulsar, though the nature of its pulsar emissions changes. Intensity diminishes, but frequency significantly increases, shifting from the radio range to X-rays. Unlike radio pulsars, the mechanism behind X-ray pulsar emissions is relatively well understood. Material caught in the magnetic field falls onto the neutron star's surface near its poles. The kinetic energy of this motion transforms into thermal energy on the star's surface. Essentially, two compact, 
heated regions known as hot spots form near the magnetic poles of the neutron star. These spots shine much brighter than the rest of the star's surface and emit energy within a narrow beam. As the star rotates, these hot spots come into and out of view from our perspective, resulting in the pulsating signal. As mentioned earlier, the pulsation period of pulsars is directly tied to their rotation frequency, which remains nearly constant over many years. This makes pulsars some of the most precise cosmic clocks available to us. Only a few external factors can influence pulsation frequency, and recently, observations of pulsars have been used to detect a very intriguing phenomenon, long gravitational waves. However, we'll discuss this discovery, which could play a vital role in our understanding of the universe's structure, in a separate video. For now, remember that all pulsars are neutron stars at various stages of their evolution. However, not all neutron stars become pulsars. When a neutron star's rotation slows even further, it may cease to pulsate, even in the X-ray range. I say may because neutron stars that have transitioned beyond the pulsar stage are essentially invisible to us. Although they still emit electromagnetic radiation from their surfaces, the area of this emission is too small to be detectable from significant distances. Hence, we currently know of only about 3,000 neutron stars, despite their total count in our galaxy likely being at least 2,000 times higher. A distinct subgroup within the neutron star classification is known as magnetars. These are a kind of neutron star anomaly whose mass surpasses the Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit. As a result, magnetars shouldn't exist, they should have collapsed into black holes. However, their rapid rotation generates an immensely powerful centrifugal force that effectively counteracts gravity and prevents collapse. Nevertheless, this mechanism can only stave off transformation into a black hole for a limited time, probably no more than a couple of million years. When the magnetar's rotation slows after this time span, it will eventually collapse, as they say, fate catches up. Could systems of neutron stars host habitable environments? At first glance, this seems utterly implausible. It's difficult to envision neutron stars having planets at all, considering that even if planets existed around a parent star, they would inevitably be destroyed during a supernova explosion. However, planets around neutron stars do exist. For instance, the pulsar PSR 1257 plus 12, situated 2,300 light-years away from Earth and known as Lich, boasts at least three confirmed planets, PSR 1257 plus 12b, also known as Draugr, PSR 1257 plus 12c, nicknamed Poltergeist, and PSR 1257 plus 12d, named Phobeter. These planets weigh in at roughly 0.02, 4.3, and 3.9 times Earth's mass, respectively. It's believed that pulsar planets form from material ejected by the parent star during a supernova explosion. But could life thrive on such planets? The immediate response might be a resounding no. Neutron stars emit very little visible light or heat but radiate copious amounts of deadly X-rays. Nevertheless, recent research has challenged this assertion. According to calculations, sufficiently massive planets, like Poltergeist and Phobeter, could have dense atmospheres that completely or nearly absorb the neutron star's radiation converting it into heat and light. If a planet orbits at the right distance from the neutron star, conditions might be conducive for life to emerge. While not all scientists agree with this perspective, it's a notion that deserves consideration. Neutron stars represent the culmination of massive star evolution, but how does their own evolution conclude? Currently, several potential scenarios for neutron star demise are known, and in all cases, the end result is the same, transformation into a black hole. Firstly, a neutron star could be entirely consumed by a black hole if it ventures too close. Additionally, two neutron stars could collide. Since the combined mass of the initial objects always exceeds 1.4 solar masses, the product of their collision will inevitably be greater than 2.2 solar masses, surpassing the Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit. Consequently, the outcome will always be a black hole. Both the absorption of a neutron star by a black hole and the creation of a black hole through the collision of neutron stars would generate a powerful burst akin to a supernova explosion. These bursts, known as kilonovae due to their power often being thousands of times greater than standard supernovae, are indicative of these events. Furthermore, even a solitary neutron star can accrue the mass needed to cross the Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit through accretion of matter from its surroundings. As a result, it, too, would become a black hole. Yet, what becomes of a neutron star that avoids all these scenarios? For trillions of years, not much of note. Such a neutron star would drift through space, gradually cooling and slowing its rotation. However, once its temperature drops below a critical value, something intriguing happens. Cooling causes a shift in the balance between beta decay and neutron capture toward beta decay. 
In other words, the process of neutrons transforming into protons and electrons gains prominence, leading to an increase in protons within the star while neutrons decrease. If the conversion of regular matter into neutron matter during the birth of a neutron star is called neutronization, then the inverse process could be termed deneutronization. Similar to how neutronization compresses matter into the future neutron star, deneutronization would cause it to expand. Expansion is invariably accompanied by cooling, which reinforces deneutronization, leading to more expansion, even greater cooling, and so on. Moreover, the protons that eventually form can engage in nuclear reactions with one another, the same reactions that power ordinary stars. However, while these reactions occur in a relatively small core in regular stars, a still hot neutron star could sustain these reactions throughout its volume. Essentially, deneutronization should ultimately transition into a massive thermonuclear explosion, obliterating the decaying neutron star and scattering its matter into space. This process would resemble, to some extent, a supernova explosion. Nevertheless, this is a hypothesis. We have not observed anything similar yet, nor could we theoretically. The cooling of neutron stars to temperatures suitable for deneutronization, even under the most optimistic estimates, would take hundreds of billions of years, whereas the age of the universe, as modern estimates suggest, is 13.8 billion years. In other words, no neutron star has completed its evolutionary cycle since the universe's inception, and this is unlikely to change anytime soon. The study of neutron stars is a rapidly advancing field within astrophysics and cosmology. Nevertheless, Earth-bound scientists also display significant interest in these investigations. Neutron stars, essentially giant cosmic laboratories, have the potential to provide insights into nuclear interactions, extreme gravity, magnetohydrodynamics, and various other branches of physical science. In our upcoming videos, we will continue to explore the mysteries of our universe, both celestial and earthly. So make sure to subscribe to the channel not to miss out on something intriguing. Until next time.